guys, Leon Cross here. Today I'm going to be sharing my leveling guide for Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, this is my character 1 to 50 guide. I made it in about 5 days. Depends on just how much time you put into the game, really. Uh, the other guides I've seen online all center around the zombies you can find in most zones, and I disagree with using them. I mean, they, they are kind of nice. They don't really stun you or anything like that, and they're pretty easy to take down. But there's so many guides out there right now that are just raving about these zombies, and if you go to these areas, you're going to have a lot of trouble um, even finding zombies to kill, or if, even worse, if you have to group up with eight people to get any experience at all, it's going to be a terrible experience. So. This is my guide. It uh, has uses areas that most people don't farm at. So here we go. Uh, first one. This is, this is an Ebon Heart Pact guide, by the way. First one's at Devon's Watch. We'll be farming the Purple Ghost just outside of town. Uh, got a little circle I use here. Um, the video kind of has a little trouble because if other people are killing them, uh, the respawn times will change over and over. <laughs> this guy here is kind of excited about seeing a veteran. Um, this is my Nightblade, by the way. Uh, so starting this kind of circle here, uh, you can kind of just move around this tree and then up the walkway a bit and take out each of the ghosts. Uh, there's a couple ghosts here that spawn that aren't on any of the, the normal interv intervals. There's one right here. But, uh, I think I just took them out. Um, so yeah, the longer you're here, the less people attacking and stuff, you can kind of force the spawns to spawn in the order that you want. You know, if, you, if you just ignore them sometimes and then come back on your circle, you can eventually get it so you're, you're standing right behind them every single time they're about to spawn. So other people won't be able to take your experience and you can move through this pretty quickly. I use this area for uh, 1 through 8 or 1 through 10 depending on the class and if you have any trouble in the next area. But... Uh, this is, this is pretty simple. Nothing here stuns you. I mean, they do hit pretty hard for your level, and you will have a little trouble with mana and stamina. But Night Blades, I use just Veiled Weapon. And uh, if you sneak up on something, you get a huge damage bonus from the crit and just from hitting them while you're stealth. So, the next area is going to be just west of the Evanheart. Or of Evanheart, I guess, hold. To Vivix Antlers Way Shrine, and then you're just gonna just head north from there. You're gonna be fighting these funky crab dudes. They look a lot more intimidating than they actually are. They've got a, they don't have any stuns. They've got a few front frontal cone AOEs. The blue ones do, and the red one. They, I mean, they hit pretty hard, but if you can stealth up behind them, you can do quite a bit of damage with whatever your nuke is. Um, DKs will definitely have the most trouble here because you don't really start out with a very high damage nuke. Uh, the fire whip is, you know, a skill of choice later on, but night blades have, you know, pretty simple time here. Templars don't do too bad with their little spear thing. Uh, there's also areas where you can group them all together, like a dragon knight can AOE them, like right, I believe right here. I'm going to try and point where each of them are, and then you drag them to the middle and pop your AOE. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be your... Six or uh, your level eight or ten, depending on when you can go there and actually start farming them, all the way up to level sixteen. So the next area is going to be in Morn, just outside of Mornhold, like the Mornhold Way Shrine. Um, by the way, you should should be collecting the items while you're doing this. You can always go and vendor them, or you can just uh, you can break them down. I mean, I ended up with twenty five in my three major um, crafting skills by the time. I finished. So here we go. I uh, started my little uh, circle here. These guys on the side of the building. So the farmers are all neutral, so they're pretty easy to take out and pretty safe. Uh, you always want to take out the, uh, the little little dogs, the little nix hounds. They're really annoying because they teleport behind you whenever they attack you. So if you can open up on them, it's probably the best. You know, score the best. Got another guy here farming with me, so sometimes they're not spawning. They're all on a pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty similar spawn timer, so you can kind of move around, and make your own little circle or rounds. 
they're uh, pretty simple, and not a lot of people farm that spot. I mean, as long as you're continue killing things, then you're going to be leveling as fast as you can. Um, it's all about you know saving your, your mana, having enough to continue going. You don't want any downtime. Uh, this is why I use a vampire a lot. This, this area here is in the Shadowfen, uh, the Forsaken Hamlet. These guys here is or where it actually gets a little bit difficult. Um, a lot of times I'll open up on the Fire Mage, Pyro Mage, and uh, just take him out or take out the healer. Uh, they don't have any stuns, but the healer, and there's one that causes a shield, it's a little bit of a pain. Um, this is the best area I could find. All the other areas are so heavily farmed that uh, I use this one for 24 to about, about level 32. Um, you can leave a little bit early if you think you can take on the next mobs, but they're kind of tough if you're a lower level because you'll you'll miss them. Uh, vampirism. It's uh, kind of the key to my leveling is uh, finding a skill or a, a cycle of skills to hit something and then finish it off with the heal. Because the heal at stage 4 vampirism costs almost no mana, so while you're draining them, you're kind of regenerating your mana there. So this is uh, Joram's stand here. There's, I just showed you the chef. Um, he's where you can vendor your stuff. This one is kind of nice to farm here because you can always just run back to town and vendor and run back into the fight. Or you can take the way shrine if you want to go break down the items you found. Uh, none of these mobs have any stuns. They're uh, they're pretty easy. The, uh, the shaman is a little bit of a pain because he throws down a little healing totem thing. You can try and take it out, drain it. You can... I, mean, I, I usually just throw a quick drain on it to uh, get one extra little tick of healing in it. That way you're not kind of stuck draining. And uh, they, you, uh, there's no real priorities here for what you want to kill. The shamans I usually aim for because they never follow me anywhere. They like to stand still and shoot. So if you want to take out the shamans, if you want to try and group up the, all the melee users together. Uh, next area, that was an East, east March, by the way. Next area is going to be Northwind Mine in the Rift. Uh, this is the area where you can get your vampirism. The blood fiends spawn at night. And uh, also werewolves. So this area is pretty pretty simple to uh, farm. The casters are probably the biggest problem. Because uh, they don't follow you anywhere. So you can't really group the guys with the purple caster staffs together. Um, they... guys with the purple cast staffs they'll uh yeah, they'll stand still and they'll cast a bunch of aoe's and stuff they're a little bit of a pain i'll show you a little aoe here the uh, soul siphon skill uh, it just kills everything in one hit if you can hit them all from behind and in stealth uh, i'm showing you my little circle here this place is farmed a bit not nearly as much as the zombies are so it's it's a lot nicer uh, you'd farm there from 35 to 44, actually. You want to stay there as long as possible, because Cold Harbor is actually pretty difficult. Uh, this next area here is going to be the Daedra on the Endless Steps. You can ask one of your guild mates to get you the, uh, the Way Shrine here. Um, these guys are going to be the, the toughest deal you face so far. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind, I'm showing you my little circle here. Uh, one thing you got to keep in mind is the Drimora Kinbeck. The only one that'll really give you any trouble. The mages do cast a small stun. But the kinbecks, they'll stun you for 5 seconds, which is pretty much a death sentence. So I always target the kinbecks first. They're the uh, Dramora that have two weapons. Some, usually they're two axes. I've seen them with an axe and a sword. They just have some different models. I'll actually show you one right here. This girl actually dies because she gets stunned by them. That little root that goes around the feet. So yeah, you train here from 44 to 50. Um, here's my uh, another character. I'm going to be putting up a gold-making guide later. She's got 212k. That's after I bought full bags on both characters. And the rest of this is just going to be my character running around. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more.